My name's Trent Granger, and uh, we're the Granger family. And uh, well, I'm here with my wife, Stephanie, and our daughter, Gabriella. Mexico is a, it's a beautiful country. The people are, are they're a beautiful people. They're a very hospitable people. Uh, a lot of times when people come to visit Mexico and they don't really try to say hi or anything to people, they think that they're hard people. They think they're kind of mean people. Until you, until you approach them, until you talk to them, then they're the most friendliest people in the world. They've got a huge smile on their face. And uh, the exciting thing is they're very open to the gospel. When people think of Mexico, it's a pretty common for people to think of like dobe houses and shacks and, and built on top of each other and, and part of that is true. When people say what is Mexico known for, people automatically think the food and the colors and the, 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 the vibrancy and the old fashionedness of it and it's very true. Uh, Mexico is very, they, they love their food, they love their tacos, and uh, I love their tacos. But they're very well known for their food, they're very known for the hosp hospitality. All over Mexico, uh, and especially here in Zacatecas, they're very stooped in Catholicism. Uh, all of Mexico is 83% Catholicism, and the Catholic, Church in, the Catholic Church and the government work hand in hand. So it's very hard to, to reach people that are very stooped into Catholicism. So it's very hard um, because there's not very, there's not a very, very many good Baptist missionaries here in Mexico. And this is a large country. And to reach this many people with the gospel, it's very hard. A, a, a lot of people will, um, they're, they're looking for that hope. And they're looking for that uh, that longing, that empty, that something to fill that emptiness in their heart, and they 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 live out of fear. They really do because they don't know if they're giving enough to go to heaven. They're giving their whole lives. They're giving money. And they're giving time. And they're giving they're giving uh, houses, you know, to the Catholic Church just in hope. I hope it'll be enough to get to heaven. And they live in that constant state of fear, and that's just a horrible way to live. Well, the, the answer to all of Mexico's problems at the very baseline is Jesus Christ. At the very base, it's the gospel. And that's why we're here. We want to plant churches, not only plant churches in the future, we want to start a Bible Institute to train young men to be able to go out and start more churches. But while we're in the process of starting a church, one of the most important things we can do is go soul winning, win people to Christ, and disciple that person to teach them to go out and do the same thing. God has uh, just opened doors left and right since we've got here. So just in, in the short time we've moved to Zacatecas, God has begun to open door after door after door, opportunity after opportunity after opportunity. Currently our church, uh, our church building is the garage of my parents' house. And the landlords have told my parents, hey, we're selling the house, so you guys are gonna have to move here soon. Well, it just so happened that the people that are offering to help my parents look for another place are also helping us look for another place because the house that we're in currently is perfect for a church building. As a matter of fact, years ago, our home used to be a church building. So it's perfect, it's set up, it's got a great space for an auditorium, it's got many Sunday school classrooms, it's got so much room for us to grow. It's amazing how God works in your life. Because when all of this is happening, when all of us getting ready to move, we got word that somebody in the States wants to buy all the chairs for our church. I mean, I, I, I was flabbergasted, I mean, I was floored when somebody said that because we have, right now we have just a small amount of chairs, we're using lawn chairs in our church right now and the, and the people here don't mind that but we're going to need a ton more i mean we plan on growing so just yesterday there's a missionary in southern mexico I, I i text him and said hey we're running low on some romans he has a bible distribution center down there we're running low on romans we need some more tracks and uh, he'll mail them to us he'll mail them anywhere here in mexico and he told me he said hey brother why don't you do this he said you're about four or five hours away why don't you drive down Take your truck, just load it chock full as much with as much stuff as you can. He said, if you want, take it back. And if the Lord's leading you, become the Bible distribution center for Central Mexico. 
and I laughed because I told him over the phone, I said, brother, you will not believe this, but for the past year and a half, that has been something exactly that we have been praying for. So God had just opened the door for us to be a Bible distribution center here in Central Mexico. What it means is uh, all of the missionaries, all of the churches here in Central Mexico will be supplying Bibles, will be supplying tracts, will be supplying John and Romans to them so that they can have the supplies they need to not only uh, give Bibles to the members of their church, but also to reach their community. So not only are we building a church here, but we're also going to be able to be a part of the ministry, you know, an hour away, two hours away in all of central Mexico and be the hub, uh, if you will, of the Bibles being distributed all over central Mexico. With God opening these many doors uh, and with God providing for our church the way He is, uh, it, it gives us the opportunity to be able to take the gospel to more people. It really does. What I would love to see one day in the near, in the near future, not in the far future, but the near future, I would love to see our church begin to have revivals and missions conferences and support other missionaries to go around the world and to hold revival conferences within the city. One day just seeing God do great things, and He is right now, but just on a massive scale here, here in Zacatecas and here in Mexico. Here in Mexico, God is doing mind-blowing things. I mean, He's doing great things here. And we want you to be a part of our ministry. We want to partner with you. We want, to, we want, we want, we want you to receive the blessings that we're receiving. You say, well, how do we do that? Well, first of all, the biggest thing you can do for us is pray for us. Uh, you know, without prayer, we wouldn't be able to stay on the field. Uh, many people back home in the States, you're our anchor. I mean, you really are. Another thing would be come and visit us. We love having visitors here and we need the help. Uh, if you want to come down for a couple weeks or a couple months, we, we, we would love to have the help uh, coming down, passing out tracks and, and singing songs and things such as that. And another big thing would be finances, of course. Uh, it's, it's not cheap to run the ministry. If you would like to partner with us, uh, look at it this way. It's an investment. And why is it an investment? Because lives are being changed. People are no longer, uh, when they get saved, they're no longer going to hell. Uh, they're going to be spending eternity with Jesus Christ. They're going to be spending eternity in heaven. And personally, I think that's a, uh, that's an investment worthwhile. Because when you're when you think, well, I'm not doing very much, but I've given a little bit here, and now that missionary has won somebody to Christ, and that person's won somebody to Christ, and that person has won somebody to Christ. That's fruit to your account. And we want to not only partner with you, but we want you to be a part of that fruit bearing process. That's how you can be a part of our ministry. God is doing great things here in Mexico. We're excited to see what God is gonna do in the future. We're excited to see what God is gonna do here in Mexico. So we ask that you please keep Mexico in your prayers. Not just Mexico, but the Mexican people in particular. Keep them in your prayers and keep us in your prayers. We need as much prayers as we can receive. So just wanna say thank you and uh, we're looking forward to what God has in store in the future.